Greetings, my friends. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, playing as that beautiful Iberian Union. So, we've got quite a few comms to go over, and a couple of things to build, and just do in general. So, last time, we were kind of pissing off some pissing off some people regarding Iberia after the train, which we'll talk about. Actually, probably, why not? Right now, because apparently, for me to really reform and make sure Franco's popular, I shouldn't take any of these steps. So, we're not going to finish speaking out against Algerian separatism. And we're not going to uphold the status of Spanish and Portuguese. If I have to redo this just a little bit, so be it, whatever. I have a better understanding now because of you guys. Uh, let's let time go on, though. So, make sure, Mr. Mocha Lover, you remember, civilian factories are not are nice. But you also have to build up some uh, military, some infrastructure, too. And refineries. Don't forget either one. Refineries and infrastructure are very, very important. We actually need more aluminum and rubber. Aluminum and rubber, huh? Well, let's see. Do we have any... Well, we probably don't have any rubber. But aluminum, as some people would call it. Do we have any? I mean, we have some right there, maybe, you know. Uh, is that is that aluminum? Yeah, it's a little bit of aluminum. We might as well build it there. So we'll make one infrastructure and some civilian factories at the same time. Help ourselves out. And then we're going to make some refineries as well. But we can't do that since we don't have resource extraction. So, uh, here we're doing okay. Only a billion in terms of deficit. That's all. Um, a billion. That's all. Uh, let's see. Add money to that damn ASAP. Yes, I will definitely do that. Uh, yeah. Let's go in and... Ooh, we can add in there. I do want to do a lot of this stuff here. And see what happens. Because I think this would be a lot of fun. Could do your popularity. Uh, after Iberia... After we do Iberia... After the triumvirate, we're going to get decisions to have Salazar lose support. And we're going to really just do all that stuff. Here, though, we're going to wait with this. Uh, Franco Torres Ministries. We might do that stuff. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. Fully Franco. Leans Franco. We'll see what happens. We really need Franco to support quite a pie. Uh, you know what? Go ahead and add another million dollars. But Minorities Debate, Anti-Separatist Agency. The Iberian Union currently enforces total equality between the two former states, Spain and Portugal. This, however, forgets one of the most basic issues that Spain has to deal with since its inception, and that's a split between the very different and even opposing cultural groups that form Spain as a country in the first place. Many of those groups, like the Basques or the Galicians, saw the Portuguese as a separate entity for centuries. But now that they're all in the same union, and the Portuguese are given special treatment, while they are still treated as part of the heavily Castilian-dominated Spain, where they feel their desires are not represented, rallies and riots against the government have become common throughout the years. This has turned more and more into a large issue, as many regions have seceded in the past, with an attempt of the Basque and Catalonia to break off in the 30s, and those attempts have been have both Cadillos worried that further separatism may break the Union apart. With their combined effort, they have devised a new institution for Spain, the Accencia Antiseparatista, which will answer directly to them, and will deal mostly with discrediting propaganda and direct suppression of separatist movements. Unbelievable that they agree for once. Absolutely unbelievable. So yeah, we definitely want to do this. Uh, build the radio tower. Mm, they're upset. Increases workers' angers. Decreases workers' angers. Reduces maintenance of the dam. And reduces maintenance of the dam. It sounds like we might be able to piss off some people some more. Just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and build the radio tower. And see what happens. And the budget is gone. It is what it is, my friends. It is what it is. Decry Italian encroachment, which would be okay. Uh, more comments. Let's see. Don't undermine Franco's support. But do undermine Salazar's. And which Salazar's events come about, come about once uh, a certain dude dies in uh, Germany, and Germany is thrown into a potential small, 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 really not large conflict. Extensive planning, uh, breakthrough, I like that. Uh, combined arms are pretty good, though. I mean, I really like combined arms, because it really works well with us, so we're just going to go with combined arms. Make it easy on us, we don't want to think too much here. Right, let's see, abandon, let's see. We can speak out against Algerian separatism. These are sorely needed. These decisions will doubtlessly make Franco new enemies across Iberia. Where Franco's popularity to fall significantly during this trying time, the stability of the nation could be in jeopardy when he, when he is needed most. And, yeah. And which we'll do some more of this stuff, too. Uh, let's see. Franco Torres Ministries. We'll see what happens. Sympathize with their ex-allies. Fine. It was also recommended I go with Help Italy. Uh, help Turkey. Which one? Shared one. Da -da -da -da. I don't mind helping Italy. I really don't care for Turkey somewhat, but Italy, they, they, they don't want to help us out either. But, you know, while school with non-Italian Catholics, our shared adherence and commitment to traditional Catholic values gave us a close link to our former allies, the Italians. With them out of the picture, we should look to other nations which uphold the same values as we hold so dear. Our foreign ministry has suggested Ireland and France as particularly good targets for diplomacy. Despite their membership of the hated Unity Pact, we can play on the cultural and religious ties which Germany in its melagomania and cowardice in the face of Burgundy is, qu is quashing. If nothing else, this will help us gain further insight into the machin machinations of the German alliance. We are, however, hopeful that the connections we do hold will give us a chance to deepen our relationships with those two Catholic European nations, which will be a great, great thing. 
Also, someone recommends I play as Japan in this mod, which I want to eventually. Minorities debates African languages. With the growth of our African positions after the Second World War, we are now faced with rather difficult challenges of integrating the regions into our mighty country. One of the first and obvious issues is that the status of the African languages in them. Iberia currently holds large regions with Tamazite, Shilla, Shilha, Rifian, and Segruchini. Berber Arab sub languages, which are clearly incompatible with the Latin, Spanish, and Portuguese languages. Both Caudillos argue, argue harshly on this, as both countries have had very different colonial policies in the past in regards to language. Salazar argues that the Union should enforce the language policy of the Portuguese Empire, forcing Portuguese through all stages of political life and public life for the colonies, while Franco argues for Spanish colonial approach, where natives can keep their language but can only hold public posts and take part in their local government if they speak Spanish. Both Caudillos are pushing for the languages, and, and in the end, the discussion turned so rapid that the final result was simple, but at the same time, underwhelming compromise. Both languages will be taught in the region, and the administration will be handled in bilinguality in order to encourage its there, but it will also try to push for both to be used in private sphere. Two administrative languages? Let's hope this doesn't bite us in the long run. Well, we'll see what happens. Actually, I guess Portugal did lose its colonies after World War II, and that, you know, it happens. Uh, Cameroon, African state. We still have the Iberian Union down here, which is kind of nice. Makokokuo? All right, well, whatever. Uh, yeah, we're going to save that for some other campaign. Hopefully, Iberia does get an update someday in which uh, we can do a lot more with them, uh, especially as a nation that, you know, might break away from us someday. But, you know, we'll see what happens. 0.87 a day. Uh, oh, what was that? Crippled sovereignty. Oh, so far, we're stable, which is good. I like being stable. It's always good to be stable. We have despotism, but the status of Iberian minority languages. The Iberian... Uh, minority languages are the strange result of artificial kingdoms and caliphates being solely integrated into Castile Aragon, causing the Iberian Peninsula to be a complete linguistic mess where two provinces can hardly communicate with each other without the help of Castilian Spanish. However, many people in these regions cannot communicate in Portuguese as well as they can in Castilian Spanish and are slowly turning into a huge mess as both Spain and Portugal lean ever closer together. Salazar has demanded that Franco change the official languages in each region in order to accommodate the new status of Portugal, with Portuguese language being enforced in regions such as Catalonia and Ois Cadi, just like Castilian Spanish. Franco has disagreed, arguing that such a move would only cause the regionalist movements to spark back to life, each of them trying to claim the same linguistic rights as Portugal. The debate has ultimately ended with the time, with the mainland's linguistic status quo being preserved. More good luck from the Caduillos. Ah, don't you love it? Oh, more free civilian factories? We gotta get that technology next, so we got that being built. Um, let's see. Let me see where the most factories can be built. So here, we got three. Four, five, six. Four, five, six. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Pop, pop, pop. And honestly, at this point, we're going to build everything up. It's going to let time go on for now. Uh, yeah. Build it all up. Because this will come in handy later on when we build even more. More, 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 more uh, infrastructure and factories later on. Well, I guess more factories because you can only build up so many things here. The Mongolian Civil War. Well, good for you guys. Good for you. Balearic Islands. Uh, don't forget these islands. Don't forget these islands. Don't forget the Azores. Pretty important as well. Non-Italian Catholics, well, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, my friends. Welcome aboard. And we could build up this area. Yeah, I suppose we could and should. I'm not sure how useful these places will actually be. There's actually a lot of provinces down here. Wow. Yeah, you can build up our little military state down here too, eventually someday. We'll see what happens up. Let, let's do our next focus. Uh, old frenemies, Delhi and Calcutta. Far away from our own shores lies a landmass filled with such a large populace and so many economic opportunities that has captivated European interest for such for much of history. The extensive trading networks that span across the Indian Ocean were of such vital importance to our forefathers that they were even sailed around Africa and attempted to find a western passage. With time, the focus of global economic activity has shifted, but this does not reduce the great importance of the trade routes which the Indian subcontinent has perfected access to. It has since been decided that we should seek to meet representatives from both the National Indian Government and the competing Azad Hind. Both states lay claim to the legitimate ruling force in India, which has created a tense rivalry we might be able to make use of. Officially, we have not recognized either government, therefore we could seek to maximize potential gains by ascertaining which other regimes will be a better partner in the future. Absolutely. So visiting other Catholic nations with a new foreign policy of Iberia focusing on looking outwards. Uh, cool. It is imperative that we recognize that Italy is not the only Catholic nation in the world, and despite the presence of the Holy See in Rome, it should not act as its sole representatives. Instead, Caduio Salazar has taken it upon himself to head to Ireland and France to strengthen the bond with Iberia's Catholic brethren. If we play our cards right, Iberia may be able to gently push Italy out of the limelight and take its place as the strongest of the Catholic nations. Not only will this a stronger relation with the Catholic nations as a whole, but also be seen as a moral victory over the Italians, something that which the people of Iberia desperately need. Bags packed and plane ready, Salazar is ready to send off to Ireland and France, hoping to tie the nations 
nations closer to Iberia, showing the world that Iberia is a strong, unified, and proudly Catholic nation. Let's head on over to the Emerald Isle. And not mess things up. So, the Emerald Isle, arriving in Dublin, Salazar was first met by a parade of Irish and Iberian soldiers marching side by side, and the head of the procession being led by numerous bishops from both nations. A brief photo op was held between the Cadillo and the Irish president, both before men quickly were whisked away to the Parliament House to meet in private. Here, both people began discussing the future of the relations between Iberia and Ireland. Even with the warm relations with the two, between the two nations, both from the sheer religious background and similar diplomatic situation, the situation of, the, of Ulster salooms. Officially, Iberia remained supportive of the Irish claims on the region, though there are some believe that the Cadillo should take careful not steps to not draw too much attention to it, as it could incite further violence between the Protestants and Catholics. Regardless, the economic benefits of Irish and Iberian friendship are obvious, and both men are ready to tie the two nations closer together than before. Business comes first. Ooh, we've already been working pretty hard on trying to get Salazar, or actually Franco, to be really business-oriented. Uh, so, improved church position of Salazar, worse than regional nationalists. Ooh, condemn the terrorism. Ooh, this is tough. Because I don't want better business relations with those guys. Condemn them. This will improve the church. Worsen regional nationalists. I'll try that. Uh, church leans towards Franco. Actually, we can do some of these things up here as well, up north. Um, Salazar talks to the bishops. They lean toward them. The military goes to Morocco. Colonial settlers are fully Salazar line. So if I mess up here in Morocco, it won't matter, probably. Right? So if I screw up with the cult settlers, nothing changes. So, the northern neighbor. After spending some time in Dublin and meeting with numerous religious officials in Ireland, Salazar has made his final preparations to head to the West Paris. Several special measures were taken as not to draw the ceremony to greet the Cadillo. The parade was made up of only Iberian honor guard as the French were careful to meet with Burgundian demands. Short and lived... And nothing spectacular, the Cadillo staff scurried him away towards a more secure area of western Paris to meet with the representatives of the French government. Despite everything, the meeting with the French went by swimmingly, and a wonderful steak dinner and several photo opportunities had managed to raise everyone's spirits, and several impromptu speeches were made to the people of France and Iberia. How now, however, Salazar has faced, with the, the continuing his meetings with the French, in order to strengthen trade relations, or to begin approaching church leaders to gather the support for future Iberian endeavors. With the Burgundians breathing down the necks of the French, the Cadillo only attempted to meet with one or the other, meet with the French... Silent majority of Salazar. Church opinion. Church opinion leans toward Franco. I don't want to push push the church any closer to Salazar. Silent majority. Just meet with the French for now. But minority debates the status of Rio de Oro. So this place has been a colony of Spain for quite some time now, and it's currently the oldest owned foreign territory of our country. While the creation of the Union has set back the integration of the Rio de Oro into Spain proper, the lack of native opposition and the swift progress of infrastructure works in the region has made Franco confident that it could be easily incorporated into the Union as a proper Spain. This, however, did not sit well with Salazar. The area is mostly Spanish-speaking, with the introduction of Portuguese being very recent and very limited. Salazar fears that Franco's plans to incorporate the colony directly to Spain fear... Spain proper and force once again Spanish hegemony over the rest of the region. Having all of this integration proposals blocked up by relentless Salazar, Franco has decided to re refrain from integrating Rio de Oro until the province is able to be integrated under joint administration between Portugal and Spain. I guess that does it for now. It is what it is. And Franco's heading to Morocco where if he screws up, it probably won't matter too much. But we'll see what happens. All right, making an entrance. Morocco, a great place of significance to the proud Spanish Generalissimo, the place where he began his arduous journey to rescue his beloved nation from the grips of communism. Yet, now, the land he once had known, like the back of his hand, where he had once conducted great ex military exercises with his heart and veterans, has greatly changed. It's been over 20 years since his reconquista of Spain. Enough time for the German instability and the new Iberian wedding to leave its toll. Franco considered that a proud showing at Morocco may prove its legitimacy and reign in an unruly colonial officials, but he also had always been a man of simple action, not a bombastic dictator like those two men who had helped him cross the narrow sea. Should he perhaps arrive quietly and get straight to business, roll the red carpet, or avoid the limelight? Hmm... May prove its legitimacy and reign in any unruly officials. Colonial settlers, natives, um... He's always been a man of simple action and not a bombastic dictator. Roll out the red carpet, avoid the limelight. Um... I don't know, man. I want to be true to ourselves, so let's, let's avoid the limelight, you know? We're not here just to show off that we're just dictators, but let's meet with local officials. Franco's arrival in Northern Africa, or the Northern African colony, has reinvigorated local Moroccan elites into pushing for further autonomy while maintaining Iberian suzerainty. The argument for this is simple. Having a puppet state will allow the Iberians to better galvanize resources from the area, whether that be manpower, labor, or natural resource extraction. Yet, giving any form of concession to the Africans 
may be met with ridicule from European neighbors. Italy in particular could, be see, could see this as a sign of weakness and could push then for a strengthened presence in the Mediterranean. However, the flustered Spanish strongman has agreed to make a decision now, the men before him waiting eagerly for a response, prestige, or decline in efficiency. North Africans should have more autonomy. Oh, this land is Iberian? Oh my goodness. Uh, I, we need stability. Like, we have to get stability because this is over here. State of the Union is stable, but can we get better than stable? Can we get, like, super stable or mega stable? I like this. I really want to say this land is Iberian, and it is. So let's take a look. Uh, it is... Oh, it's right here. So, this land is Iberian. So this one... Well, it's a really want to take North Africans should have more autonomy. This will improve the natives' opinions. But worse than the settlers. The settlers, they're already fully aligned, doesn't matter. But the colonial natives don't have a preference. So, if this helps stability, man... That's probably the way we gotta go. And the colonial natives lean toward us more. So, Gibraltar debate, funny him out. Spain has been left in charge of uh, the Atlanta Tropa project for some time now. And maintaining the dam itself as a whole has been severely damaging for our country. This has led to the final decision years ago that the Union would cover for the expenses of vital repairs, but that would refuse to pay for normal maintenance, which would run at the hands of the Triumvirate. As their policy remains the same, both Franco and Salazar have their concerns with re different regions of the dam. The internal workings of the systems are starting to rot, and the risk of them collapsing sooner or later seems to be ever-growing if our government doesn't pay for its replacement. On the other hand, the conditions of the technicians that work on the dam to keep it working are also severely threatened. While our manpower is plentiful for the dam, our technical experts are hard to come by, and even more those brave enough that wish to work on Atlantropa. Tropa. After some short discussions and some interjections with some high-ranking members of the maintenance crew of the dams, both leaders have decided they will increase the spending in the working conditions for the technical experts in order to provide them with a safer working environment as to not ru risk running out of manpower in a moment of need. Our engineers deserve the best, although we, although maybe we should fix internal working sooner or later. That seems like a good thing. So, uh, people are killing each other. Meeting with the settlers now. The Iberian settlers in Morocco have met with Franco today in Ceuta, and after Franco delivered a heartwarming and praiseworthy speech, the settlers unceremoniously bombarded our great Caudillo with their grievances and troubles. Over the course of several hours, it became clear that the settlers were agitating for more subsidies from the Iberian government to lessen the burden on them. They antagonized in painstaking detail the hardships that they face in trying to settle the arid deserts of Morocco from worthless and parched soil in the hinterlands to lack any honest work in the cities. While it will place further strain on the Iberian economy, and it may be advisable to promise them more financial support, even if it is just to keep them quiet and loyal, either that or some token and inconsequential gestures to, to appease them for the remainder of Franco's visit are in order. Ooh, our expenses settlers goes up? Oh, that's not bad. We lose political power, which we don't like. Give them token concessions. Honestly, even if we do this, it doesn't matter. Oh, man, this is a tough decision. This is tough. I don't want to worsen sell. I mean, if, if we do that, it doesn't matter. This is going to, Our expenses rise sharply. We lose political power, which I really don't want to lose. All right, so if we do that, they become what? Are they still Salazar aligned? They're still fully Salazar aligned. And all we did was lose political power. God dang it. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to help out Franco as much as possible. Next up, what we should do, uh, release a book, that which probably talks about intellectuals. Uh, we'll probably release a book in which Salazar pisses people off. Because why not? Because we can. And money matters. Uh, only 1.05, not bad, not bad. Ah, uh, clock injured in Kiev bombing. So, day of the Portuguese solidarity. The day was not a mistake, clearly placed to overshadow that historic date the Portuguese broke away from the Spanish control in 1640. The day of solidarity is a much more somber occasion meant to remind the people of Portugal and of Iberia at large why exactly the Union was born and what it's truly meant to preserve. That Union will preserve Portugal. Very good. I like this three. So, maintenance project labor. A huge issue Alan Thoropa has been brought up is the sheer demand of manpower required to keep it from falling apart. While the union has kept the demand covered until now by hiring a lot of state workers, the dangerous working conditions, relatively low pay, and even lower prospects of professional growth has forced us to severely rethink the way we handle our workforce on the dam. While Salazar has proposed to continue using cheap workforce, Franco has come up with a better solution, conscripting criminals for them to work on the dam in exchange for the liberation in 10 years' time. According to Franco, they'd be able to import prisoners other, other countries wanted to dispose of and be able to tackle the expenses of this new penitentiary system by, by providing for the basic livelihood of said criminals. While Salazar believes that this will be detrimental in the long run as it allows dangerous criminals to be absolved from guilt, Franco has reassured him that hardly anyone working will be able to survive those 10 years of work and that expenses of maintenance would be cut by 30% in doing so. With both Caudillos agreeing in the end, Franco's proposal will come into effect and the workforce in the dam should be progressively replaced by criminal conscripts. Better them than us. What is this? Is this like the Dolvanga Brigade? Or in which we're just going to conscript, you know, criminals? I guess so. You know what? If they die, they die. Cool. Alright, so the East of Hegemon. 
Whoa. Go down under. Down in the Cape of Good Hope. Everyone knows Iberia. Uh, I kind of want to keep going down that way. Honestly, and regarding Italy and Turkey, yeah, we, we don't care for Italy. But Turkey's so far away that I don't really care too much about them over here. Are they going to invade us? Probably not. It looks like Turkey's actually not doing as well, so let's go help Italy first. The tensions over the disputed territory between the former triumvirate members exploded into a political and military crisis with a Turkish statement on intent of territories in the Middle East. The regime has threatened to directly invade the Italian colony which holds the land the Turks claim as their own. We must choose how to react to this, if at all. If we were to invade on the Turkish side or to withhold entirely, we may be able to benefit off Italy's weakness. However, with the vitriolic rhetoric and aggression that the Turkish state has shown, we cannot with good conscience support them through their benign neglect or intervention. Hence, Instead, we should seek to indirectly support the cause of the Italians, who still hold an internationally recognized legitimate mandate over the territory. With this, we may be able to draw closer to, to the Italians and possibly seek diplomatic solutions to our own tensions with them in Algeria. We'll see what happens. If we have to fight the Italians or fight some people down here, so be it. So, visiting the Indian subcontinent. It is time for Franco to visit the Indian subcontinent, and unlike Columbus, he would actually make it there this time. There are opportunities abound in the subcontinent, and to have an ally who had access to the natural resources and manpower of India would greatly strengthen Iberia's diplomatic and economic position. We will have to make the decision whether to recognize India or brother the puppet state Azad Hind as a rightful inheritor of the land of India. India, though, it was the stronger of the two, but Azad Hind has the might of the co-prosperity sphere against behind it, and support for the government could lead to further diplomatic opportunities with Japan. Of course, at the same time, we could choose not to recognize either and carry on our own policy of neutrality let's go are they actually they're actually part of the co-prosperity sphere which it's interesting because we've already been to the united states and we really like the united states they do pretty well with their capitalism japan isn't doing bad probably but knowing japan i don't know man oh we have the ledger here of course uh where's the i mean we can see our gdp it's just less a democracy. Caduio Franco had reached Delhi, a city seemingly bursting with life, wealth, and prosperity. At least it's how it looked from the government-approved tour. Franco quickly tired of the pillows and trees and motioned on to get with the injured at ham. The Indian delegation argued passionately about why Iberia should support them, but it was difficult to tell whether that passion derived most from a love of India or hatred of the traitorous bastards in Azad Hind. Before Franco lies two options. We could definitely say that Iberia will recognize a great Indian republic, or we can nod along to what they say and make some vague promises before we make a beeline to Calcutta. A visit to Calcutta would remain would mean throwing away any chance of getting the At Indians on our side, but Franco has been meaning to try a real Calcutta biryani. Now, I like both, but honestly, ooh, social democracy, they're left wing. Oh, but with the way they're going, it might be best just to go with India, because they'll, they're more on the side of the OFN, which is what we like, and the OFN doesn't like Japan, which is okay, and by the end of all this, we might not end up being in uh, the same position that we started as. So, that all being said, we're going to probably officially recognize India. Pissing them off, but you know what? Is Japan going to invade me? Maybe. But hydroelectric installation. One of the major flaws of Atlantaropa is a massive expense in places on the state with little to show for it in return. With the ever-increasing expenditure in its maintenance, the Caduyos have been looking for a way to make the dam profitable for years. A new proposal has managed to reach the Caduyos recently, consisting of a scheme devised by architect and engineer Pedro Martinez Aloya to reform a series of sectors in the dam to produce hydroelectric power. However, the cost of this project is huge, and just the maintenance of the dam is a risky and slow endeavor. However, both Caduyos agree that the expansion will be necessary in the long run, so both are willing to start preparations for those modifications to begin. However, it should be noted that said modifications affect core sections of the dam, and the high risk of reforming these areas may lead to a higher casualty rate than usual in the the maintenance crew. Nevertheless, it makes if it makes a damn pay for itself, it's worth it. Especially if we use criminals. Yeah, just go for it. There we go. That's why. Oh, we, we passed it. Great. You know what? That's why we wanted to help Italy. Retrieve our troops. Oh, no more shared intelligence. Military's opinion. Military's opinion and silent majority while worsening the military's opinion and the businessmen. I don't want to piss off the businessmen. Silent majority. We, we kind of get a bonus too if we do it like this. Silent majority. Doesn't matter. Lean towards Franco. We're somewhat leaning towards Franco, I think, overall, but, mmm. Mmm. On this side, no more shared intelligence. Come back home. We get better military opinion, which actually... It's, it's already fully... It's already fully Franco aligned. Do I want to have two hertz? Improved military opinion, which will basically do nothing. We get more silent majority. And we get less... Other stuff. Businessmen. Don't have a... I don't give a... God dang care in the world. Uh, we get lose air XP. Our expenses will decline. Italy and its colonies will lose our investments. 
No more shared intelligence. Gain some stability. Let's just do our the Eastern Hegemon. The Second World War is two great victors, the Reich and the Japanese Empire, following their immense success and tiresome imperial consolidation. The two former co belligerents, however, grew apart in their ambitions. This has caused a considerable strain in their relations. It would be foolish to not make use of such a great opportunity, though. We therefore should look to the Eastern Hegemon and some of their more important puppet regimes, such as the Chinese. Increasing our connections with the sphere might help in improving both our trade situation while also possibly paving the way for better military ties. We'll do whatever is needed to make sure the Iberian Union does well. And it looks like. We bought it, pay a lot in uh, debt. Cool. Very cool. 1.17, just a number. Just a number. Not bad. Has Burgundy finally done it? Oh, God, Lord. God help us all. That is not good. When they go kaboom, we are not going to have a good time. Actually, gun wise, are we doing okay? Infantry, anti tank. Eh, we're doing okay. So, flags on dam. In yet another episode of the Cadillo's feud, uh, an argument has erupted over the placement of the Iberian flags on the Gibraltar Dam. Salazar arg argues that the Iberian flag should take precedence over the banner of the Reich, and that the bottom of the Iberian flag should be begin at the top of the Reich's flag. Franco urges that the Iberian flag should be much higher than at least two or three meters above. The pair ended up arguing for several minutes over the issue and ended in an archetypal lack of consensus. This is worse than the Rojos. Oh, my goodness. Um, come on, guys. Come on. Actually, are you going to be done quickly? You'll be done very quickly, actually, which is very nice. Easter Hegemon. And then we shall do Go Down Under. I kind of like that, but let's get to South Africa before they explode. Our frenemies. Historical animosity has kept our relationship with the peoples of England and Scotland distressingly sour for far too long. Perhaps now that the Unified Kingdom, or United Kingdom, has been dissolved and its member states humbled into submission, we can restart diplomacy on different terms. The visits to the island certainly will not harm our standing as long as we seek to remain respectful and not overstepping boundaries imposed by our cultural differences. Bettering our relations, and perhaps increasing the strength of the ties between our nations, could put another thorn in Germany's side and give us a European, additional European connections to use against our former triumvirate allies. Visiting the Co Prosperity Sphere. Cool. With the business in India concluded, it is time for the Caldillo friends to go for the East and establish Iberia's foreign policy in regards to the great, Greater East Asian Co Prosperity Sphere. Since the loss of the Portuguese colonies all those years ago, Iberian presence in the Far East has been limited. However, given the emerging markets that reside within it, it is imperative that we return. There is much work to be done and so little time to do it, but Franco can and will maintain and forge our diplomatic ties and economic ties in the Pacific. Our mutual hatred of Germany means that the fostering relations with the GEACP is top priority. While there, are many, or there may be some animosity towards the Japanese and their occupation of our former colonies and massacres of Iberian citizens in the Philippines, this is the new Iberia, and we intend to show it. Let us go, my friends. That would be a very good thing. Oh, so yes, the debate. Impact on the economy. In a passionate feud over the time-honored Spanish tradition, Franco and Salazar has erupted into debate over the impact that famed Siestas owned that they have on Iberia's consistently poorly performing economy. Salazar argues that the net hours loss is that if used, could significantly boost Iberia's productivity and that they are a major detriment. Franco responded with expected anger, refusing to concede, and insisting the effects are negligible compared to the cultural importance. The feud ended in a typical stalemate. How is this relevant? But the Empire of the Rising Sun. Franco's plane landed in Tokyo. The crown jewel of Japan, and by extension, all of Asia. The city lives up to its reputation as a hustle and bustle of an army of businessmen, way through the economic hub like the anchovies of the Mediterranean. As Kaduyo's car drives through the metropolis, the work ethic of the people of Tokyo is on the presence as the sound of industry clangs throughout the city while the scent of all sorts of foreign delicacies wavers in the air. Franco could get lost in the city, but alas, there was work to be done. We could talk business with the Japanese and further develop economic ties with the powerful Zaibatsus in an effort to gather more foreign investment back home, or we could meet with the Iberian community leaders in Japan and show them that their homeland has not forgotten about them. Many of your priests and missionaries who came to this land in an effort to convert the local populations, and so the religious back home would appreciate this gesture as a symbol of respect for Iberians and Catholics worldwide. Business? Yeah, we've been trying to improve business by quite a bit already. Meet with Iberian citizens, church, and... So church... And silent majority. Church already leans towards this, but the silent majority does not. The businessmen hopefully already sort of like us. I like actually GDP growth. That's growth. Oh god, that is difficult. The church already supports us somewhat, and we could probably let's see, over here. We already have bishops and we could probably ruin that further on. So let's go and talk about business. 3.1. Does it 3.1 get any better? Please tell me 3.1 goes up a little higher. Just even by 0 0.05 would be good. So, under the heel of the samurai. Franco's playing. Landed in Beijing, the only potential rival in size and stature of Tokyo. But there's clearly a different scent in the air. The foul scent emanating from the factories blocked the nose as much as the pollution blocked the sight. If Tokyo was a city where dreams were made, then Beijing is where dreams went to die as the cold, hard cogs of progress grinded the populace underneath them. Franco saw what Japanese occupation had done to the soul and populace whose faces bore no discernible emotion. Unfortunately, this journey was not for humanitarian efforts but for business, and so business is all that shall be discussed. Taking business or talking business with the Chinese could yield many results as the economic potential for such a large country in terms of population and natural resources could allow Iberian firms to hold on to the co coattails of China's Im immense, imminent meteoric rise. On the other hand, 
We can meet with the Chinese President Guo Zongwu and further establish diplomatic ties with a country that could become a powerful actor on the world stage should the Chinese successfully throw off the chains of Japanese domination. Business. Our GDP will receive a boost. Business opinions. Inform, improve foreign leaders. Um. Uh. Who? Chinese President. Diplomatic ties. I'm, just, I'm going for GDP, man. I'm sorry. Hey, 3.4. That's not bad. 0.3. That's not bad. Okay, I was, thinking, I was expecting like 0.1. 0.34 is not bad, especially when our debt is just growing faster. Bulgaria sides with Germany. It is what it is. You know, we can't really fight them that much. Oh, no, 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 no. It barely helps, but we got to do it. Civilian budget boost. Um, point. Oh, God. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. We just added half a billion by boosting the budget some more. Um, Andorra? Are you sure you want to do that? Are you really sure? You want to do that. But happy 1963, my friends. Trying to get through this campaign is a little difficult as we're... As things are going on. So, Portuguese siestas. As the two highest echelons of Liberia's hardly functional government became embroiled in yet another endless argument as Franco and Salazar sparred over expanding official support for the workplace siestas into the Portuguese regions of Iberia. Salazar insisted that there was no need for such an unproductive and senseless cultural tradition to be brought into Portugal, but Franco argued there would be a positive change in the policy for the nation. Salazar was baffled and categorically refused to concede as the argument ended as the Cadillo's feuds normally do indecisively. So, but there's so many better things to discuss. Jesus Christ, come on. So, you know what, for now, after we'll, we'll keep that there. Nothing there. Um, okay, so we got $5 million here. And now the dam workers are content. We're building up the radio thing, upgrading the cranes, reducing the maintenance cost. Which is 78 million. Uh, let's see. We have 5 million. Oh, we're going to spend 5 million right now. So it's either finish the eastern side or western side of canal plumbing. And then upgrade the cranes. I want to do that. Increase the workers' anger. You know, we're going to piss off the workers anyways. It doesn't matter to me. So, we'll do the eastern side. Because why not? We can. You know, GDP growth. Not bad, not bad. As long as the unit is stable, that is what matters the most right now to me. That, whatever. Didn't hear about it. Numbers, don't want to know numbers. Technology, how are we doing on technology? Ah, oh, we're not doing good, bad. Horizontal industrial organization is good. Down in the Cape of Good Hope. Another target for our diplomatic outreach program is the nation of South Africa. The relationship between the peoples of the Cape and Germania is known to be one of frequently intense exchanges. South Africa may have saved itself through its neutrality, but this is also lodged from into the bad books of Germany. We will be able to easily convince them of our sincerity considering our own issues with the uh, European hegemon. Building ties with South Africa, though, could also hopefully gain us favor with the rest of the Anglophone worldwide, especially the OFM. It is necessary that all our actions in the foreign sphere now show that we are ready to distance ourselves from our previously Eurocentric foreign policy. This will be a vital step in that direction, which would be great, but visiting the British Isles as the game of politics, the show must carry on. The desire for greater foreign relations has brought the eye of Iberia northwards, towards the island of Great Britain. To this end, an official state visit by Cadillo Salazar to England and Scotland has been scheduled. If everything goes to plan, we shall leave with more context to our north. If every it will be effectively be a surprise visit, but not without a short warning in advance to make sure their reception is prepared. Everything is ready, and that all that remains is to send the order to fly over to the fallen empire. And now I'd like to do this. I'm going to spend more money on the dam. Ah, another million, but what is a million? To a deficit of over a billion. The Fallen Empire, after a mostly calm flight, Salazar found himself in London. Most of the city was in questionable shape. In between bodyguards and other security precautions, it was best to be somewhere else where there would be so much attention. The wealthier areas were the best to be, as they were the least touched by the country's ongoing economic troubles. A little while was set aside to relax, as even though through the depressing the atmosphere, there was an undeniable quaintness to certain areas of London. There's no time to d dally, and so Salazar found himself needing to attend to the real reason for his visit. However, this isn't enough time left in the day for everything. Either Caudillo can take the intended action of a properly meeting with Prime Minister Alec Douglas Home to discuss diplomatic ties or use the meeting to focus on business matters. It wouldn't have the same potential payoff of a friendly England, but could provide economic opportunities. Improve foreign leaders' opinion of Salazar? Ooh, ooh! Foreign leaders of Salazar focus on business. Our GDP will receive a boost, but not GDP growth. So I'm going to go with... Well, the businessmen must have a good opinion of Franco. If... Strengthen diplomatic relations. We could do that for now. I Let's go and do that. Let's do that. That sounds like fun. 
and the Highlands on Rhode Scotland. Salazar's came straight from London, landing in Edinburgh to considerably warmer reception, as someone had taken care to properly notify them about the Iberian diplomatic mission. Things were clearly more stable around this than the, than in the city of London, with a generally calm atmosphere. Salazar spent some time on a tour, as well as attending to some minor matters before long. Though time slipped away, and once again, not everything could get done by the end of the day. A few generals who came along with the trip expressed their desire to meet with the Scottish High Command, allowing them to bond over various discussions and potentially foster friendly relations for the future. There's still time to meet if we act quickly. Alternatively, Salazar could meet and formally discuss business, which would create the possibility of lucrative trade. GDP will receive a small boost. Meet with our High Command. We're going to meet. Oh, this will improve the military. Oh, no, 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 the military. Oh, military. No, 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 no. Fully Franco aligned. Fully Franco aligned. Business, ministries, uh, I don't want to weaken in that. Businessmen, I don't want to mess with the military. There's, I'm not going to do that. So, talk about business. So, yes, the debate, regulation time. The Cadillos of Iberia have erupted into a furious argument once again, this time dealing with the ti different time zone difference between Spain and Portugal and the establishment of a maximum siesta time. Salazar insisted that the siestas, primarily in Spain, needed a maximum cap to try and limit the economic effects of siestas. Franco countered this by returning that economic growth could also be streamlined if Iberia were to adopt a uniform time zone, rather than keeping the current two. The argument went nowhere, as the two men considerably continued, continuously repeated their arguments and were unable to come to any sort of agreement. It really shouldn't be that difficult, but you know what? It is what it is, I suppose. 25.08, not bad. Deficit to income ratio, not bad yet. Horizontal industrial organization. Let's go ahead and grab this. This will be good. Resource extraction techniques. Much, much needed. Very much needed. Keep building, and keep building, of course. Mm, Castile. Do we have Castile here? Yeah, we do. We should probably actually build up there first. There we go, two. That, that'll be nice. Things you can build up the infrastructure and make factories even faster than that. So, talks break down. In an uptake from the normal, endless debates between Iberians, the Iberian Cadillos, Salazar took the step of suggesting banning CSS altogether, citing the effects it has on the Iberian economic productivity. Franco was outraged by this proposal, and the two soon erupted into full blown feud. As Salazar repeated his suggestion, the two almost came to blows. Despite most likely being sympathetic to their respective national leaders, guards intervened to separate the two leaders, both of whom left in a furious mood. Why did we live? Just to suffer? Oh, look, 0.17, nice. Even though the debt has gone up even more. <sighs> the leaders, man. I, I swear, these leaders. You know, you think you have two leaders that can, might have the best interest of everyone here? Just a mess. Just a flippin' mess, man. Cool. And do you have any attrition issues? Any attrition issues at all? Maybe? Maybe not? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Ah, establishment and need. Oh, Erguin. Okay, over in the Levant. The Jews have found their design, but what... Cool! Look how big Israel is! Menachem begin. Uh, oh, he has no focus. Oh, why can't Israeli or Israel have a focus tree? Oh, that'd be so cool. When did Greece get Cyprus? Ooh, nice. Uh, today, a series of meetings begin between Cadillos, Franco, and Salazar to debate the establishment of an Iberian Council. Oh, God. The first meeting consisted of determining how and why the Iberian Council will be created, and the Cadillos have already disagreed on some things even though both agree that the council should be sm small at first and grow with time. The growing speed of the council is one of the things they disagree with. While Franco thinks the growth should be slow so that the power balance remains steady and doesn't expectedly shift hands, Salazar wants the growth to be quick as possible to try avoiding the bureaucratic pain the slow growth rate would cause. This matter was debated for longer than expected, but the meeting finally ended. Both Cadillos left the meeting happy because they agreed on the fact that the Iberian Council was going to be created for the benefit of the Iberian people, even though they were, that was not what they called the meeting for and no news of the establishment debate had been revealed. At least they agree on something, so... Progress? Maybe? Cool. And let's go down under, because I'm, I'm avoiding this middle branch, because this seems a lot more interesting visiting other nations. So the OFN alliance is not just limited to the Western Hemisphere. With multiple of our diplomatic missions traveling east into Asia, it only makes sense that we also build up a relationship with the Australian nation. In a similar vein to other nations, this could allow us to further pursue closer ties to the democratic bloc as a whole. In addition to this, if we could establish good relations, we may be able to create a trading partnership. Australia is home to a wealth of natural resources, vital to the industries which support our military industrial complex, which would be great. But now, visiting South Africa. For the time being, the Iberian outreach in Europe is finished, and it is just time to expand our horizons and take a trip further south into the jungles of Africa. South Africa is our sole pri pri priority due to its unique position between the OFN and the Unity Pact. Salazar will have to be careful as the country is a hotbed for tensions between the ruling Anglo aristocracy and the Boers and the disenfranchised native population. Furthermore, the internal conflict is amplified to the global stage by the support given by the Boers by the Reich's protectorates to the north, setting Af South Africa to be a potential stage of proxy war between the Reich and the USA. 
It is through this that the Cadillo Salazar must use his diplomatic skill to navigate the political landscape of South Africa, whether that be by standing with the government's current position or by lobbying, lobbying for a reconciliation. We shall see. And uh, our worker security. Uh, we'll see about that. So, Boers needed some British. As part of a new foreign policy, Salazar's plan is to reach Cape Town, the capital of South Africa. As the Cadillo moves throughout the city and the divisions that lie within it can be seen almost immediately, the differences between the two gor between the gorgeous architecture of the city hall compared to the squalor of the, of the native Africans are subject to. It's overwhelming as Salazar meets with the nation's richest businessmen, most powerful politicians, and most influential community leaders. A feeling that would not subside is that South Africa was a nation by and for Anglos, regardless of the government's position. That this was the best situation for the Boers and Africans. However, Iberia seeks diplomatic re reasons, and so must make a decision whether the I Union will officially recognize. The South African government, or whether to call for reconciliation between these three factions of odds. If we were to recognize the government, it could grant us further ties with OFN and help us position ourselves with them in this Cold War. On the other hand, we would call for reconciliation in the hopes that, with enough pressure, the government could open up its government to two boards and Africans. We're going to support the government. Yeah, there's no question. We want everyone to see that, hey, we support these guys. Hey, we like each other. Hey, I'm going to put more money into the dam. Hey, I'm going to probably not spend $5 million yet. Once we get a little bit more uh, things here. Let's see. I want to spend five more million. I'm a big spender. I want to spend and finish the western side of the canal plumbing. <sighs> we need five million. So actually, with five, we get the option to spend ten political power, but two more million dollars in. So I think we could spend one million. So I guess we can improve worker security for now. That'd be okay. So representation. What are the hottest issues when it comes to the formation of the Iberian Councils? Who is represented there, and how should they be represented? And as most things. Both leaders have different opinions on the matter. Franco stated that the council should be based on what he considers are the three natural parts of the society. The family where one is born, the town where one lives, and the syndicate where one works. Salazar opposes and instead proposed that the council should be filled with members chosen by an odd pir pyramidal system. Franco's difficulty to understand Salazar's unique choosing method together with Salazar's frontal denial of Franco's proposal made sure that the meeting lasted much longer than it was intended to be. After much explaining or explanation, Franco finally understood Salazar's system, which then he vetoed before calling of the meeting. Both leaders say they are, they are very close to choosing a system, but not a word was said regarding the representation for regions like Catalonia, Galicia, or the Basque Country. Can you uh, explain Salazar's system again, please? It's, it's a little confusing. Uh, cool. Still need more political power, but you know what? That's a that's a occurrence for every single day. I want to be a big spender, man. Three million dollars. Uh, hmm. There we go. Now we can spend the five another million. Upgrade the cranes, we could do that, but I'm going to finish the west side as well. Thumbs up, man. Thumbs up. And we're currently halfway done with completing the dam, which seems to be taking forever. 21st of April. 18th of April. Wow, we finished get infrastructure and got that far. So, housing and building. Iberia has a lot of beautiful buildings and locations full of history and meaning, but sadly, one of the places can only host the Iberian Council, of course. As with most things, the Cadillos are deeply divided in this matter. Franco proposes that his own residence, the Royal Palace of El Pardo, should be the meeting place, but Salazar then proposed his own estate to host council. This conversation then transformed into an argument to see whose residence was better before turning into a string of insults to one another. The matter was finally dropped in the debate, debate moved to the proposals of hosting the council in either the Palacio de las Cortes or the Sao Bento Palace, with each proposal being defended by Franco and Salazar, respectively, and followed a pattern similar to the private residence proposal, arguing which one is better before deciding to insult the other building. The meeting was called off, but both leaders say that they still are analyzing options. The only thing that this meeting has left clear was that El Pardo has better plumbing, while Sao Bento has less leaks. How about meeting in a different place each time? Why not? Because that sounds like it's expensive, that's why. De go down under. And let us finish this episode with... Everyone knows Iberia. With all of our diplomatic missions across the globe now coming to a close, it means we've finally been able to step out of the shadows of a simple Eurocentric foreign policy. In this, we have proven that our great union is ready for business and closer ties to many nations around the world. This has proven that the triumvirate collapse was a blessing in disguise. As much as the anti-German bloc was necessary following the intense Hitlerite power plays, there are also many more opportunities in the international sphere that we are now able to make use of. We will not fall behind the rest of the inward-looking Europeans. Our nation is one to be taken notice of. And that will conclude today's episode, which we are trying to get through as quick as possible. But there's a lot of reading, my friends. But I hope you're enjoying it regardless. And if you are, consider leaving a like, maybe. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow, as we may potentially fret over the debt and or deficit. Regardless, thanks a lot for watching, and have a great rest of your day.